So in this video, I want to talk about more about some of the stuff that goes on in Mishra Kitense. One of the things that I want to do is discuss more philosophical and more analytical about some of the things that go on in Mishra Kitense. So of course, if you want more analytical content, more philosophical content, not just on Mishra Kitense, but all things related to anime, definitely tell me in the comment section down below. But I wanted to talk about more about Rudy as a character, more about the decisions that he's made that are right and some of the decisions that he's made that are wrong because Rudy is far from a perfect person. One of the things that I don't want to fall into and this is just part of the overall analysis itself is that one of the problems that I have with Mushoku Tensei is a lot of discussions have kind of just devolved into the same dot points. For the last couple of years a lot of the same attack points for Mushoku Tensei have turned into like the same like five to ten dot points with a slight new coat of paint for each new season and this is going to happen for season three what i don't want to do is just repeat these same points over and over again i just want to talk about it now and then leave it at that but i could absolutely go through my anime list go through reddit go through x slash twitter go through my comment section go through facebook and find every dumb comment about mishiki tensei that's critical that is based on incorrect information and incorrect assumptions twisting context twisting the definition of wording and break them down into a multi-hour long video every week around the clock but to me it adds no value to the discussion and the reason why is simple most people that hate Mushoku Tensei and that are attacking Mushoku Tensei in that fashion have no intentions of changing their mind. They're going to find anything they can find, whether it's true or not. People believe what they want to be true, not what to be true. That is a saying that I made for myself. I don't know if anyone else ever had it, but I coined it for myself. I made it for myself many, many, many years ago when it came to clickbait fake release dates when it came to animes and it rings true to many things when it comes to anime and definitely in this case and i say it again people believe what they want to be true not what to be true people create their own fictional reality because people want to desperately latch onto something because they don't like admitting that they're wrong it's perfectly fine to be human and be wrong about something to be critical of something but again creating lies to justify hypocrisy to lie to justify hatred is something that i won't stand for but again there's no point in me breaking all these down hour after hour video after video because they're never going to change their mind they're never going to change so what's the point and thus gets into the point of why I want to do more analytical, more deep dive videos because I don't think they add anything to the video. I can make a million of those videos and make fat stacks, get 100k subs and be happy or be happy from the sense of growth and money. But would I be happy with my content? No, I'd hate it. I'd be miserable. And I love analyzing and breaking down things. One of the things that I love doing is looking at different perspectives. I love looking at something from a different side of view and pretending that I'm debating on that side. Examples would be, and this is what I wanted to get into this video, was Rudy in the right in how he approached discussing the cheating with Sylvia? Now again, I was very clear on those words. Did he make a mistake with cheating? Yes. Did he cheat? Yes, depending on the perspective. You could argue and this is what I mean. You could argue that he didn't cheat, that Sylvie already gave him permission, but he denied it, but she already did. And so you could argue, oh, well, yes, he didn't cheat because he, she said it was okay, but he said he wouldn't do it, but he did it anyway. So it still gave permission. But then you could argue that, well, no, he still cheated because he gave a promise to something that he couldn't uphold. See, this is what I love doing looking at different perspective weighing up the positives and the negatives just because you think something doesn't mean that i can't have a fun breaking it all down and looking at the rights and the wrongs and getting deep into the weeds that's what makes this fun because it's not about being right or wrong it's about thinking and analyzing and having a discussion that is what's truly fun and that's what i want to bring back not just to this channel and to, to, to what I make as a content, but to the anime community. Because I think something is lost when it comes to discussions and analyzing things. Content has become hollow in the Anitube community. I want to bring some spark, some fire back to that discussion. And if I have to be the villain to do that, so be it. 
Do I think Rudy made the right decision cheating? No, of course not. Anyone with half a brain knows it. Did, did he do the wrong thing by sleeping with Roxy? Yes. But do, did it help him overcome the issues that he was going through? Yes. Did Sylvia give him permission to pick up another wife? Yes. Though she had more the Beast Girls in mind, not that she really liked the Beast Girls, but she was like, yeah, okay, fine, if you want to have them as your wives, your concubines, you can. Not really happy with those two, but you can. Her only stipulation was that he couldn't sleep with Nanahoshi. That was just like the no-no. It was like, nope, you can't go that way. I honestly really want to go into the what-if scenario as if Rudy actually hooked up with <laughs> the princess. My god, I, I have a thing for her. She's so hot. She's just kinky. She's fun. I, I if I was Rudy, I'd, I'd be tempted to. But she she was okay with that one as well. She just didn't like Nana Hoshi. She probably wouldn't have felt comfortable with the princess, but uh, Arya, but yeah. Roxy is one that she probably had the most okay with, and that's because Rudy has a deep respect for her. She knew a lot about Roxy and has a deep respect for her and they kind of they they're equals they see each other's as equals and so that's why that kind of works is it an ideal world where two two women having one husband makes sense in the real world no not really because there's a lot of issues psychologically that you could break down where things will go wrong but again it's a fantasy world so you've got to throw some disbelief like some reality out the window you just got to shovel it out it goes out the window but the real question comes down to should rudy had had the rest of his family in that discussion now, i've talked about it multiple times i say absolutely not I don't think his sister should have been in that discussion. If so, then why not have the maid and his mother in that discussion? They're more of a more of an adult component to it. You say, oh, but the maid isn't his mother. No, it's technically his stepmom, really, kind of, because he's got a he's got a stepsister, that's their mother, then why not have her in it? She had the maid in there, the the the, the sister, the stepsister, so yeah. And the issue is, is that she had, oh, sorry. The issue is he had someone with biases. And at the end of the day, the way I see it is when it comes to relationships, especially disputes like this, it needs to be between both parties that are involved, which is Rudy and Sylphia, and then have Roxy in another room ready to come in at Sylphia's request. Now, a great analogy of this and why having the two sisters in the room is a bad idea is this. And this was something me and Ed, psychologist, had a discussion of. And he actually asked someone else this question. And they kind of said, you know, oh, yeah, I'd have my sister in the room. Because, oh, like, just talk to my sister. But it was kind of a bit messy how they kind of worded it. Because it was like, oh, well, I'd go to my sister for advice. But would I have her in the room? Oh, well, maybe, yeah, it depends on the context. And the thing is... And this happens for men and women, is that going to your best friends for advice on relationships sometimes can be a blessing and a nightmare. An example of that is a real life thing that happened with, not with me, but that happened with a group of friends that I knew, was that I knew a friend that was having some relationship problems and he wanted to go to his friends about it. And so he went to a group of us and one of his friends was like oh yeah 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 you should break up with her she's clearly cheating on you you can get better you deserve better and they basically were a close friend and they basically influenced them to break up with that relationship so some months later they broke up they went their separate ways and then a couple of months later she hooks up with that very same friend and so this is why I've always said, sometimes your friends are not the best people to go to for advice. Sometimes. Again, exceptions to the rule. Because for me, if I had relationship issues, would I go to my friend, my male friend? Yeah, I probably would, depending on the context. But I also understand that I need to be mindful that there are biases. That we as individuals always have our own hidden biases in mind, and sometimes you know, going to your friends has good intentions, and I'm getting to a point here, but sometimes they have good intentions in mind, but everyone has their biases, and sometimes going to those people, they don't have your best interest. 
It's something that I was discussing with someone online when it came to their opinions on animes and their enjoyment, and I said to him, going to random people for advice on what you should and shouldn't watch is the worst idea because they don't have your best interest in mind. They're going to tell you what you should watch based on what they watch so that you watch their content. It's a great example of, again, you know, good intentions sometimes lead... There's a saying, I, I forget it, but... Uh, the road to hell is paved with good intentions. And this is the same situation of like, sometimes you may get your family involved for advice, but sometimes they don't have your best interest in mind because for example, his actual blood sister has religious biases. And so ramming her in the room is just a disaster waiting to happen. Again, the other issue though too, is a lot of the fans wanted her in the room because she said what they all for. And that's what, that's the problem. People have biases in it, but the way I see it is very cut and dry. When a family dispute happens, it should be between the parties involved, and then outside influences should only come in as requested when needed. So again, example of Roxy. Sylvia clearly had her own thoughts and opinions on the situation. She saw things very differently because of the lifestyle that she's lived with Rudy's family and then there's this whole discussion of well she was groomed into this I don't think she was groomed I think she's a very competent strong and independent woman that needs no man she should have booted Rudy out taken the house taken the kids and lived a life as a single mom now I'm kidding she clearly knew that Rudy had a testosterone that was a little bit too hard for her to control. Was Rudy in the wrong? Absolutely. And that's the thing. Understanding why Rudy does something and justifying it are two very different things. I'm not justifying what he did. He was in the wrong. But he was also in a situation that honestly he wouldn't have got himself out of. And the only way they foresaw getting him out of that was doing exactly that. And it was actually more Roxy that kind of persuade him let's just say that and that's also why there is some cut content in it as well that i'm not going to get into because i could spend another 10 minutes going over that but this is why mashuka tensei is so good because there's so many layers to it and i've discussed about this before but i wanted to talk about it from a different perspective of kind of like giving those real life examples of again how sometimes we go to our friends and family for advice on things but sometimes they don't have the best intentions in mind because sometimes and family members do do this sometimes especially if you go to like your, your mom or your dad for advice and i think it's important still to go to them but you need to have this in mind when going to them that sometimes family members will try to live nicariously through you and they'll try and make you make decisions based on their life experiences but sometimes they'll overcorrect because of stuff that they've gone through. An example would be, you know, maybe something happened to them where it led to cheating. And so they see a little sign of something going on between you and your partner and they go, no, 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 you have to do this because this is the same sign that I went through that was cheating. It's like, again, recency bias or biases because of our own experiences. That's why I show these examples of what I've been through and how it influences me on my opinions. Because how we see the world is very different and how we see literature is also very different because of the life experiences that we go through. We're all very different because of that. And that's what makes Mushuka Tensei so great in that sense. Let's say hypothetically though, and this is just a what if. What if the mana disaster didn't really happen? Eris and Rudy kind of stuck together. And or let's say even the mana disaster did happen. And Eris just didn't go walkies. And they decided to go to the academy together as a couple. As a married couple. And then Sylphiet came along. Would Eris be okay with Rudy shacking up with another chick? I think she would allow it if it's what Rudy truly wanted. But it also, I think, what allowed Rudy and Sylphie to get together is that pivotal moment where Sylphie was there for a major moment in his life and helped him overcome it, where he is in love, it feels indebted, and wants to be there with her for the rest of his life because of what she's done for him. That moment of helping him get over his ED is what pushes him to go, yes, I love you, I want to be with you. But if that same event didn't play out, I actually don't think him and Sylvia would have got together. Yes, you have the past, 
and Rudy's past there, but I, I feel like enough time had passed where his, um, his feelings towards her would have slowly evaporated and his feelings with Eris would have taken over that. And so if they went together, I think Rudy just would have made the decision to just stick with Eris. Because again, he had good intentions in mind that he wanted to be loyal to Eris. Or should I say, sorry, R R Sylvia. Like in his mind, he wants to be loyal to them. But because of the situation that played out, he ends up doing something stupid. So it's that question of like, okay, well, if Eris and Rudy were together at the Academy, would he still do that same thing? It depends on the situation. Would he be that depressed that someone else had to get him out of it? Like Sylvia. If, that, if something like that happened. And then an example would be, let's say, yes, Rudy... And Eris went to the academy together. Paul went looking for the mother, found them, and Eris had to stay at the academy because she's pregnant. And Rudy has to go and to find his dad. And Sylvia says, I'll come with you. And let's say Roxy isn't a part of the equation. I'll, I'll add another scenario to this as well afterwards. But let's just say they went together and they tried to save the mother. And they succeeded, but Paul still passes away, and Rudy goes into a slump, and they say, Sylvie, you have to sleep with him. Then I see him doing that same situation. Now, let's say if we just switched it to Roxy again, yeah, it would play out the same way. So I do think, depending on the situation, it would depend on whether Rudy would do the decision that he did but if it's just a normal day-to-day -day life and there's nothing that's drawing him down to that desperation of connection then i don't ever see him actually ever cheating i think the reason why he cheated is very simple he was in the massive dump he had lost all perception of reality his clarity was gone and at that time roxy was really trying to influence and a certain other individual was pushing for that as well i mean it's not like a certain elf could sleep with him because she was already with someone else. So she kind of threw Roxy in there. And because of her relationship with Roxy, it, it allowed that to also happen. It, I'm trying to throw a lot of different what is scenarios to kind of throw the idea of would Rudy do it in this situation or this situation or that situation. And I think depending on them depends on would he. Because again, us humans, when a lot of stress is put on our shoulders our judgment can be compromised and we can do really dumb stuff when we're really under a lot of stress and a lot of pain and suffering mentally or physically and that's why he made the that's why he did what he did is he completely at fault for it no not really because roxy again is part of that equation and again it takes two to tango so i feel like there's a lot of things to that Again, did he do the right thing? No. He shouldn't have cheated. He should have stayed loyal. But things don't always go to plan. But you've also got to remember that Sylvia kind of gave the green light for him to get another chick on the side. And as much as he tried to be all noble and say, oh, I'm not going to do it. I think Sylvia knew at some point it was going to happen. And it does highlight it in the light novels a lot that she kind of just anticipated that it was a matter of when, not if. Which, in a sense, you could basically just say that she kind of knew that he was going to cheat. You could see it from that perspective. Which is kind of sad. But she loved him that much. And he does love her. And he, she knows that. But she also knows the kind of person that he is. And he's a far from perfect person. And the story's not trying to make Rudy seem like a perfect person. And that's what I do like about Mashiku Tensei. Is it doesn't try to make these characters perfect. Because in the real world... We are far from perfect creatures. And I think that's why a lot of people don't like Mashuku Tensei. is because a lot of isekai power fantasy animes try to make characters seem too perfect. Which is good for certain things. But I like how Mashuku Tensei is kind of gritty in how it portrays human elements. Cheating is a major thing that happens. Divorces happen. Breakups happen. It's a constant thing. There's all these stories. There's like entire Reddit subforms that go over bad relationships because we as humans make stupid decisions. And I think it's good that Mashuku Tensei has that. But what I'm trying to get across is that there are a lot of isekais that try and make a main protagonist too good to be true. 
And it sounds noble and everything. And, you know, you could sit there and say to yourself, oh, I would never do these things. And, oh, I'm so perfect. And the only thing I've ever done wrong is, you know, maybe jaywalked once. And it's like, hmm, I feel like you've got a couple of closets and skeletons in your closet that you're hiding. So I'd love to know your thoughts in the comment section down below. What do you think of this discussion? I think it's just fun. I think it's interesting. I think there are many layers to this. And some of the other things that I do want to discuss is about Eris and Rudy's relationship and how things came to be at the end of season one. And again, sort of what if scenarios. Because I like looking at the what if this happened? What if that happened? And maybe going even deeper again to multiple layers to that of, you know, well, what happens if... Eris was the first one that he hooked up with and how far would it go and where would things look and see in different branches. Again, any suggestions are also welcome. If you like this video, hit the like, subscribe, and I'll see you beautiful nerds in the next video.